creating a product for the you know office person preventing office syndrome and the flip flop that I told you, Ocean's Glass Company, the toys, and the application apps startup. for startup student. You know, she would like to become like a startup, so she developed a new business based on the dog lover mm, as a target group. And here is the way we learn. We train the student of uh, providing the skill that they need, drawing skill. You know, sometimes we have a craft skill introduced to students, so it's a wood bending skill that we have the guests, the designer guests, uh, very renowned ones, help uh, come to teach our students how to make that wood bending. Design thinking skill, of course, we always deliver that almost every week. It's a group work so many times, so students learn how to collaborate with their friends, how to lead the team, how to be the head of member, a group member in the team. It's project based, so it's the nature of industrial design. So students come up with their own projects, but we give them only the theme and then some kind of parameters that help them choose the project of their own interest and then students have to find their own project that they love to work with. Discussion, of course, it stimulates a critical thinking exhibition. So students need to be someone who able who are able to present you know, and convey and communicate their own thinking to public. So I will go very fast. We also have international collaboration because we we value a lot of uh, cultural diversity uh, among the uh, Asian countries, Singaporean universities. During summer breaks, we usually organize a workshop trip to Singapore Nanya Academy of Fine Art and also to Shibara Institute of Technology in Japan and also to Taiwan as well. Sometimes we have the school from Harris, the NC will come to work with our students exploring the cultural issues, Shibara universities. Uh, we also have the network with the alumni and other professionals because we would like to maintain a high quality of professionalism. This is the graduates company, a brand called East. Uh, they develop their family business you know, just from embroidery, the uniform shirt, into something very artistic, kind of object like the one you already have. So, okay. So we we'll like to wrap up a little bit. <laughs> uh, you can you can see that uh, industrial design is not really working just only the product itself, but beyond that. And some and you can see that sometimes we tap into like community issues, social issues, and also uh, the trend, link with the trend as well. So. If you have any uh, questions, please uh, welcome to, to, to ask any questions. Any questions? No. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jan. Thank you so the floor is now open for questions. Anyone, please? Anything else you'd like to know? Yes, please. Yes, please. My liaison got from South South because it's our school. So my school is really being near uh, to your campus. Uh, I have a question about the national collaboration. Uh, I can see you have, you have um, any students and institutions working with um, your curriculum. Um, mostly, are they, are they coming to the campus? Or the student also have a chance to um, go to the international yes. working space. Oh, yes. Um, for the internationalization, we have inbound and outbound kind of activities. For the inbound, usually it uh, happens every year, and once or one or two times a year. And then outbound, student has a chance during summer breaks to go and exchange with the, you know, the university that we have enrolled with. And 
we have enrolled with many, many uh, international universities, like in every single continent, I think. India, in China, China, China Taiwan, Singapore, France, Japan, France, France Belgium, Denmark, Germany, uh, and Germany, Germany, as well as in um, America, in Boston universities. So students going in and out all the time. Um, so I think that the early students, early seniors, they are obliged to take internship with these enrolled in institutions, right? It's possible as well as some of the students doing internship in Singapore, in Japan, in Indonesia. So they have a chance to work with international. And sometimes uh, they can extend that into their final year project as well. Like one of our students, she has the in internship in the research lab in Shibara Institute of Technology in Japan. And at that time, she just you know did the research with the prof professors, Japanese professors. But after that, she developed the topic that she researched into the project. So I think somewhere around here, it's about the musical instrument for Yamaha company in Japan. So the professor, uh, professor from Japan helped her to develop the brief, the design brief, and connect with the Yamaha Japan company. So when she came back, she developed that into the you know, final year project. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Anyone else in the audience? Anyone else? Can they see time? Yeah, sure. <laughs> so that might be that might be an issue. Although you know we need to consider our international audience. But if you do want to ask a question in Thai, our adjuncts can accommodate your questions. Anyone else?
questions for Q&A for 10 minutes. Again, Jans, take the stage away. Thank you, Mr. Betty. Um, okay. Uh, the introduction has been done, uh, so we, once again, uh, a little bit background from uh, where, where we come from. Actually, I just realized both of us, we are graduates from this program too. Yeah, so uh, this is a rather biased presentation, I suppose, okay. because we're going to talk about our program and our experience. Um, and then we were given a topic about the future of education. Um, so we will also present uh, yeah. something that what we're looking at and observe yeah. from the students' uh, perspective. And I think as counselors, as uh, teachers, uh, you need this kind of information to address to your uh, students. Yeah. So we will try to give you more information about this kind of topic. And then uh, as you have any kind of uh, Questions, please write it down, and then myself and Ajahn Hood will give you some answers, right. if we can, okay? Right. Okay. Uh, but personally, I am, uh, as Ajahn Nick uh, mentioned, we are kind of alumni here, right? Especially me, I'm the first batch of communication design <laughs> programs. So back then, like in 12 years, I guess, yes. right? And this is uh, what I'm um, kind of pay back to our, pro our program is like coming back and <laughs> become a chance here. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of uh, angles that we can share with you today. And then if this is kind of interesting to you guys, you can then pass it on to your students or, or even your uh, people that you know that, okay, <coughs> this is what we are uh, kind of aiming and offer, right? Uh, so let's start with uh, our sharing things which uh, kind of Janix kindly uh, brings to us uh, about the global terms of uh, architecture and, this, and design education, especially in communication design uh, field. Uh, yes, so I would, because we were given the task, okay, say, you know, um, Nick, can you talk about a little bit of the global trend? Uh, so as we are preparing our presentation content, uh, I came up, you know this guy, right? This is this is a very famous guy right now, Jack Ma. I think you have seen, in fact, I think you have seen this presentation. So I would like to bring this to the table to kind of discuss and then uh, bring it out as a material for us to uh, continue on the, the presentation. And everything with the, this is a teacher. And teacher does not mean I know better than you are. Everything I know better than you are because I learn from others. But a teacher should have learned all the time. A teacher should share all the time. A teacher should always expect the other people better than you are. And by the way, education is a big, big challenge now. If we do not change the way we teach, 30 years later we're in trouble. Because the way we teach, the, the thing we talk, teach our kids are the things that the past 200 years is knowledge based. And we cannot teach our kids to machine will be smarter. We have to teach something unique that this machine can never catch up with us. In this way, 30 years later, our kids have the chance. I hope I answer your question. It's a very difficult one to answer, but what are those skills that you think we need to, we need to teach? If it's, we're moving away from knowledge, what are the key things that are leading? Independent thinking, teamwork, care for others. These are the soft part. The knowledge may not teach you that. Mm. But that's why I think we should teach our kids our sports, entertain, uh, the, the music, the painting, art. But making sure humans should be different from everything we teach should be different from machine. If the machine can do better, you have to think about it. Um, yeah, so some of these points that I've listed out here, uh, I think this is a, it's a, it's a relevant point for us. 
uh, I just want to highlight okay, uh, the part, okay, uh, painting and arts, because we are dealing with uh, communication design is dealing with uh, graphic design, arts in general, okay? Um, and of course, uh, these are some things that we notice that it is available in all the experiences that we have with the university and as, as a student and as, as a teaching staff right now. Uh, so, I will skip this one because it's quite similar to it. So it's about uh, Jack Ma again, but I think Jack Ma managed, because he's a global leader right now in innovation and marketing, you know, he's, he's the guy to listen to. So I want to reference something from him as well, which I think is quite relevant, because this is the future of what we have to deal with, the machines, the AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, machines only have chips, but humans have heart. So th I think this is something that we can continue on to work uh, as an uh, education industry in, in a whole. Um, so, Jack Ma also talked about the competition of the future. It will be competition of the creativity, imagination, learning, and independent thinking. Uh, so these are the things which the machines will still have a long way um, to bring ourselves to that point. <coughs> So uh, I'm going to use this as something to kind of uh, give an idea of what communication is design. Uh, communication design is about. Uh, so let me just bring you to this. Um, communication design. Many will actually think that are you good graphic design? This is a common question. Like what we have with the industrial design uh, siblings of ours. You know, we we our, our, we always look at ourselves as the four, four sons and daughters of the uh, School of Architecture and Design. Okay, so we have architect, we have interior architect, we have uh, the industrial design and also communication design. It's the youngest among all, yep. right? Yeah, so we are the youngest, as you can see. Brother or sister. Yes. Right. Um, so in general, we, we want to train the students to be conceptually sound. They yeah. have to be, uh, they learn how to build up concepts, build up ideas, and then not just idea, but to support the idea with good research and good experimentation. Now this is the general idea. And you may ask me, some students is here today, you may ask, is it graphic design? Is it uh, filmmaking? Is it photography? Is it fine art? Is it um, installation art? Is it social media? Is it, is it graphic design, poster design? Yes, these are all the components um, that we can cover in this program. Yes, it's a wide thing. But what is commonly trained is still on the conceptual thinking, you know, like what um, Mr. Jack Ma has quoted to you. Yeah, anything to add? Feel free now. Yeah. <clears throat> so as we can see here, this is the four, it's a four-year program. The structure is quite simple. Uh, foundation year is going to be very hands-on. I will show you some videos later. Uh, second year will be skills and improvement and exploration. Uh, because uh, we still have to face the reality. Uh, not every one of us, we are trained in Photoshop, Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator, some of this design software or 3D software. Uh, and we gonna take this year to really sharpen up the skill. Uh, so it is a very difficult program, to be honest. A lot of the <coughs> students gave up because second year, sometimes first year. As first year is also very open openness. Yeah. yeah. So the third year is where conceptual development starts to uh, be sharpened up, and then we will teach the students and train them up in terms of research. And then the last one, the last year, is about application and uh, skills, application of the skills and, uh, of, and also application of the concept. And then uh, right before the fourth year has happened, the kids, uh, our students are uh, allowed. Or it, I, I actually, it's a must thing for them to go outside and do an internship. Uh, we call it cooperative study with the com real companies, right? So, so you, as the construction, you can see that we kind of uh, prepare themselves for, for the future when they fully graduate test, right? Uh, a lot of programs are dealing, right now, are dealing with the real companies, not just an internship, but it's for, for the real pro profit, like in, in money or in the real experience, and that's what we are Aiming. Actually, we are dumping this uh, for quite a while now to uh, dealing with 
whether it's a, the, the, the other's company or our alumni's company as well, right? So you can see that for the first year to the third year, the students are quite ready for working and then when they get and go on the experience from the workings outside, they, they can come back strong on four years and then uh, they are now uh, preparing for the final shapings and then they will be ready for the, the after graduating and then apply for their works now, which quite, as I mentioned, is quite wide. Right? They, they can be whatever they want to be in the fields of communication design or even outside. Right? So the next few things is I'm going to share to you some video clips which is taken uh, in the classroom, in the studio for the first year. Yeah. Uh, some of this video, uh, some of your, our guests have seen before, so please bear with us. Uh, we're going to show uh, the, the video again to just to give you the idea uh, how the classroom works like. Uh, this foundation course is shared uh, across three different um, major. Okay, we have the architect students, interior architecture students, and communication design students in the studio. So the first year is kind of a mix, a mix back of uh, different kind of exploration. Uh, so this is very much a, like a collaboration in the classroom. This is a brainstorming session. They are linking their information together. Um, what we emphasize here is on the social skill. How do you deal with situations? How do you agree and disagree on criticism and uh, different kind of uh, opinions? Yeah. Uh, then the following one will be <coughs> uh, idea communication. Oh, sorry. So, uh, English will be the medium of, uh, to be used in the classroom. Uh, and then, of course, uh, it's undeniable the, the language to access a lot of knowledge and network uh, for the future. So this is something that we are constantly training the students. Uh, yes, the students might be still speaking Thai to each other. Okay, this is the reality to face. However, uh, for the presentation, we really insist, okay, only English and try your best to work it out. And of course, artistic skills, this is important. Uh, we will train the students to use their hands because we, we forgot how to use our hands. Our hand gestures has now, you know, limited to up and down, left and right, and tapping only. So <laughs> some of these drawing skills are not there already or it's fading away. So this is something that we really want to stimulate the students. We bring them out from the classroom, go to an open space. Yes, it is very, very hot out there. The students are all sweating. Uh, but however, these are some of the stimulants and reality that the students are encouraged to consume. And then, uh, as you can see in the center, is the dancer. Um, then the dancer is there to do some kind of motion, and then the students are supposed to quickly catch and then draw out the actions of the dancers. Uh, so these are observation skills. Again, it's beyond this square box, you know. It's, it's gone further away. So something that we hold on very, very dearly. Uh, materiality engagement. Everything is flat now. Again, we want to get out from the flatness of the screen. Uh, we actually ask the students go to look out for unwanted things and then arrange them on, on the floor this way. Uh, what is it about? Um, we, we will be honest to you, sometimes we are not quite sure as an instructor in the classroom. Uh, but this is where we, we position ourselves. Let's figure it out together. Uh, let's, let's try to conceptualize all these things. How to make sense of all this unwanted material. So this is much more like an exercise that we carry on. If you ask us, like, okay, what's your knowledge about all this material? We will say, no, we, we are not sure. However, we can always do a research from um, the box, <laughs> the box, the black box, right? Um, but it is how can we uh, make sense and then make it into something useful, which is something that we really emphasize on. Yeah, to, to, to add a little bit on what Ajahn mentioned before is about. Uh, actually, this is true that as a, as a teacher of Ajahn today, it's not mean that we don't know everything, yeah. right? There will be one question or two or other question that 
okay, you reach the point that you you don't have no, you have no ideas about it, right? And then I believe that this kind of the the teach the, the teaching method that we are using is so useful because we are working with students, not students working for us or not be working for them. We are working together as a teams, as a families or as a as a co uh, uh, colleagues and stuff like that too. Now the, we. As I said, we don't have pressure on, on, okay, I cannot answer this and that, yeah. right? And then, in an obvious side, students have a chance to research or to uh, under, understand the problem by themselves. So they are the one automatically solve the problems. We are there just to give them some directions, stuff like that, right? So there's a lot of times that a, a student come to me and say, uh, people would come, they call me P <laughs> after one or two years, so I don't know why. <laughs> Maybe I'm too friendly, <laughs> but then put how can I doing this? Can I doing that? Of course, it might be sound lazy that okay, you can searching by yourself. But when they're doing that, they become the master of that problems. Then they can solve the problems by themselves. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this is another video I took during the uh, foundation class again. Uh, that day, there's two kinds of faces from the student's expression. Mm. Oh, this is so difficult. Yeah. This is so... And then the other one is, oh, this is, I've never done this before. Uh, so, and, and they started to have a sense of satisfaction. Uh, from this, I, I can um, come down to one idea. It's like, uh, we, we lost the idea of process. Okay, uh, I think as a counselor uh, or, or, or teachers, you want to advise your students, it's a, it's a process that the students have to go through. Uh, this process is actually very difficult. Some of them hate it, some of them say, I cannot do it. Uh, but we still insist that, okay, come on, try, try. Uh, this is again the observation leading back to uh, the, the generation. We are dealing with a new generation of students, students which are less hands-on, a lot more visual stimulated in that sense. Yeah. Um, I will skip this part. Uh, tactile experience, I love this. Uh, I always like to show this to my guests and my friends. Uh, this is a project done by Atan Kentaro. Atan Kentaro says, uh, I want you to sculpt your own little face, uh, your, your face into a little sculpture. Okay, you can see that uh, in proportion of the hands is really tiny. However, we want to take away one sense now. We want to take away the sense of I'll show you. So they are basically sitting behind the chair, trying to blind themselves deliberately, okay, so that the hands become sensitive again. You know, uh, like then, then you started to touch, and then uh, this kind of knowledge starts to build in back into um, your 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 body and your your minds as well. Right. Yeah. So this is, this is first year, you know, we, uh, everything is about touch, about unlearning. Uh, so what's next then, okay? Uh, so what is the creative part of this? Uh, so, and this is, this, this, this kind of, I love this picture because it kind of sums up uh, the next year because it's a big jump. Uh, students will look like, uh, I'm not kind of sure what's going on right now. And uh, yeah, why? Because. Uh, on the second year, they will start to explore different kind of mediums. Okay, Arduino, I think this is something maybe your school is working on as well. These are programmable chips. Uh, we are utilizing this right now in order to create artworks, to create interactive uh, media and then to, to have it to uh, yeah, be more meaningful. Virtual reality, anything yeah. from you? Yeah. Uh, as you know, then, right now we are we kind of free moving ourselves into the uh, cyber world to the to, to more convenience, right? And then there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, chance that that uh, our student, our our kids will be moving to that. We, I don't know if you guys are watching that thing, uh, Ready Play One, that uh, Ready Play One is soon uh, uh, last month that people are giving up on the real world and they move back, uh, they're moving to the cyber world, but and then again, the purpose of that uh, that film is about taking people back to the reality. Sorry about this. 
right? And then this is another medium that Civic can explore. We can work together to uh, see if it fit on us or not, right? And then uh, we're talking about mobile device. So mobile device is not a mobile phone anymore, right? You, I showed you guys that your uh, your your the smartphone, iPhone, Samsung, or uh, Google or whatever, right? They're not a phone anymore. They can be an app, and they use a lot of things. And of course, we can use this as a, a record uh, of feelings device as well, right? Yeah, so aside from the industrial design, uh, many of our students are still very interested in creating something, uh, porcelains or ceramic works, which is a bit artistic as well. Uh, so these are the technology which we are observing right now is available in the high schools, international schools, as well as um, you know in the university. So these are towards like the future of what we are having right now. Um, on, in one of the subjects that I've been teaching right now, a lot of the students started, started to draw some illustration in their sketchbook, transfer them to the computer, clean them up, and they send to a fabric printer. So they are very proud to see their products you know, being printed on a fabric and, and, and continue on um, you know, to extend the application of their graphics. Um, and then of course the AI will come in really, really soon. Soon. Yeah. So. Um, I'm going to show you one last thing, maybe because we have, we have time's up. I'm going to show you one of the, just one of them only, I think, okay? This is the thesis book that it is done by um, our graduates. So this is very serious. You can see um, graphic design has already been applied here as the basic to carry the content. Uh, we don't want graphic design that has no content. So students are trying to be using, gra uh, using graphics in a very conceptual way to like, review and consume. So they are talking about uh, this kind of um, issues about uh, what is being seen and what is being hidden. So a little bit philosophical, the idea of see, the idea of consuming. And therefore you can see uh, the way they lay out the design are also trying to answer this kind of concept as well. So some referencing, a lot of referencing, intellectual framework. They are getting more serious to get something a little bit uh, more substantial in terms of their, their research. Right? So what it is talking about, um, again, the black box. Uh, everyone has a virtual black box which can be translated into a visual like this. Everyone is in their own world, little square box. Uh, so these are becoming very conceptualized in a sense. So he continued to work on it, and then in the end, from this kind of visual, um, he tried to use some kind of programming language, face detection um, programming, and then some kind of a light, light installation setup, and then he make a, a light setup that looks like this. Yeah, a cube installation that will have light emitting out. As you go closer to this box, you'll be blinded. So the concept is quite, sim quite similar to our phone. The closer we have, the more blind we become. Yeah. Yeah? So this is an installation in a room. So everyone who goes in, like, wow, so fascinating. What is this cube looking thing going on? Mm. So as you move into the cube, yeah, the, the lights are Yeah. As you can see, that this is this is look at first it's look like conceptual design. Mm. Uh, you know, whether it can be used or not, right? It's, it's, it's kind of in our head, right? So this guy has one of the technical tiers, and then actually he made it out in the real pieces with the interactive program, which you know we don't even give him a lecture about this, right? Yeah. This is purely his study, yeah. right? A programming a material that he. Uh, it use right the skill a certain skill that he need in order to build that big giant uh, multiple cubes there right a size uh, a space design uh, anything that that involved in the project is purely from him right this is this is the real one this is the real one yeah this is taken by the real picture it's not a three D generated yeah. one but yeah it is done uh, it is already set up during the exhibition. Um, the reason we show you this thesis book is to give you an idea uh, that we are very serious in the business. Mm. We are not just making something beautiful. Uh, beautiful is the first criteria, of course. 
uh, you need to capture the attention of the audience. That's the uh, main criteria. However, uh, in order to able to have knowledge which, and wisdom which is transferable, uh, this is a very important part of the whole uh, process for us. Yeah. So now uh, maybe we can open for Q&A. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Uh, and and, and uh, you, you we have time to clap. Uh, actually, you guys, uh, especially uh, you, you girls who are interested in vocation design, we still have, still have time. Because now we have a final year graduate uh, the show mm -hmm. happening right now from vocation design, and this is the last week that we do, who we now is located on the top called Super Show and then design uh, uh, the, 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 the food games. Which if you want to go there and see the, the works of uh, soon to be your seniors, you can see that of, 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 of course, uh, including you, uh, your people from uh, your teachers, right? You, you can visit us there in the super shows at Gary. Yeah. Located in Hong Kong District. And then now you can see the whole picture that. Uh, we are not just about graphic design, we are not just about printing or the beautiful person that we want there. Mm. Right. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you, Ajahn. Um, I'm from, from Cambodia, from the, 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 the high school. Uh, I have no question, but I need your recommendation for re uh, for uh, integrated like uh, architecture and design in high school. Uh, I mean, I want uh, to get your idea how to make passion for our students to <coughs> interested in design mm -hmm. because we have no curriculum mm -hmm. for our high school, but. I really, really uh, need um, to make our student passion with this field. Mm -hmm. So right now, I need your recommendation for for our teacher to uh, to make our student uh, interested. Recommendation? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, in my point of view, sir, uh, I think. I think the passion we are not controlling, but not just do it for us, right, for people. We, I think we, we all know that uh, what passion we have, but we still blocking ourselves from that. We still blind ourselves that okay, okay. I, I think I got a passion, but I can do. I cannot do it right now, so I save it. So I have to like do, especially in the student case, I have to study hard to stuff, right. And some some idea I I am not quite agree is that we want to block our passion if that passion not making money so not making us uh, creating our life which is not true actually I have to pass some some something for you but we have not have the times but it's about people who living in the social media right uh, there's a lot of Facebook page now. And most of them, most of the in most of the successful Facebook page is about themselves. It's about their own product. It's about their own passion. It's about their own story. And believe it or not, it can sell. I don't want to. I don't want to drag money here. Actually, it works, right? So, as as a teacher, as a guide to the student, I think. Uh, I think. What we can encourage them to have passion is about us giving them an inspiration, about us giving them and uh, pictures of uh, ideas that okay, your passion can be worth, right? And at first, at, at the first time, I never, I, I don't believe that something on Facebook can be can be uh, sales or can be can be useful. But now I have changed my mind. There's a lot of things that. If you have the right way to do it, it can be worse, right? Uh, the other thing is, like Chinese mentioned, that we as a teacher still has to learn. Yeah. 
as to develop, right? I have to watch more movie more films because I'm teaching films in the you know, programs. I have to watch more films in order to uh, answer or suggest my student about you should watch this film if you want to gain some abilities like this, if you want to do a movie like this and stuff like that. I still learning right now. Right. So when we learning more and more and more, we get more more passion, more inspiration, and then we can pass it on. That that is even that is really thing to our student and we never know that this is this can trigger their heart to, to, to trigger their, their passion and they can start in that person. Uh, this is my side. Right. Um, I have this kind of question quite often should to me. Um, if you ask the students, what are you passionate of? Yeah. It's an unfair question. <laughs> because if I ask you, what are you passionate of? Mm. I think most of you will be quiet. And you need to think, uh, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> right? So it's a, it's a common question. Yeah. Uh, so if I will put myself into a student in a, a, a regular school, uh, I think if, if there will be a group of teachers who are showing some video clips, carefully selected video clips about different industry, you know, talk